Creator Spotlights is a podcast series by Develop that seeks to spotlight the work of student makers, founders, and doers. Develop is a student-run nonprofit accelerating technology and experiences for social good. Since 2016, we've been working to reshape the tech pipeline in the Philippines, investing in students throughout their career, giving them community, and also connecting them to different opportunities across tech. We envision a Philippines where creation is universal and intentional and accessible for all. In this episode, we're so excited to be chatting with Kate Young, a writer of prose, poetry, music, and games, who often goes by the name Kate Livewire. Kate has had several poems published by Haik Ulan and two short stories published by Eight Letters Bookstore. On the indie side, she's released several original songs and created a text-based Halloween game. When Kate isn't busy writing, she's working towards a career in environmental science or playing Minecraft. This is Kate Young. Kate, for those who don't know yet, how would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Kate Young. Um, I go by the pseudonym Kate Livewire most of the time. I'm an author, a poet, and a singer-songwriter. I'm also a biology major at UP Cebu. <laughs> well, my main hobby is writing, definitely. Like as you can as you probably figured out from what I said earlier, it's just like writing stories and poetry and songs. Um I also love to sing and that's where, you know, my musician uh, hobby came about. Um, and I actually, I like to uh, sew. <laughs> I like to sew bags, um, just like, you know, those reusable grocery bags. And then I uh, also make like stuffed toys for my friends sometimes, just as gifts. <laughs> and um well, for things I've done uh, of note, um, I've published two short stories uh, as part of anthologies. Um, I've released, uh, I know it really sounds so like <laughs> official, but <laughs> it's just like uh, recordings of original songs that I put online on SoundCloud. And uh, like Bianca mentioned, I just got a new job where I'm a student assistant at an artist cooperative. So that's exciting. Exciting. It seems like you're doing so much and I can't help but like notice like this running theme of arts around all you do. So I'd like to ask you, how did you get into the arts in the first place? Like tell us your story. I guess this is typical, but um, it's it actually started in my childhood because I grew up reading a lot of books because my parents like really encouraged um, reading. And um, at, like by the age of six, I can't really say what age exactly, but by the age of six, I was reading Nancy Drew on my own because like, you know, when um like if your parents ever read to you as a kid they like read like maybe one chapter and they'll be like okay that's enough because I'm tired and then you're like no I want to read more and so my dad would read like one chapter two chapters most every night and I would get sick of waiting and I would be like okay fine if you're not gonna read it to me I'm gonna read it myself and so I just started reading um everything I could get my hands on and you know when I was reading these amazing stories I was like I know this is really <laughs> arrogant but um I just thought if these people can do it then I can do it right <laughs> I was so convinced of it. I was like I definitely can write I mean I can write you just put words you make up stories whatever it's easy and I would read I mean I would write all these silly stories in, in notebooks and they never went anywhere but that was my beginning and then later when I was around um 13 I started to take things a bit more seriously because I oh god this is so typical but uh, well I started writing on Wattpad <laughs> oh god the Wattpad face but always no <laughs> That's amazing. So, it's so cheesy. <laughs> oh, but um, I started writing there. And at first, it was just like poems that I 
um, I just came up with and they weren't that good but I started a poetry book called Sin Lab and and uh, and then I got into the fan fiction community oh lord oh my past is coming back to haunt me and and I started writing a lot and it was you know when when you write just for the fun of it and you're at that stage where you're not overthinking because you're like yeah this is fine this sounds good and then you just it just comes out of you so naturally and you write a lot even though it's poor quality and then um a few years later like you learn more about writing and what makes a good story you improve your taste and then you look back at stuff and you're like god that is awful but actually my wattpad days were really useful because that's the time when i made a lot of writing friends a lot of creative friends and i actually learned a lot through them because honestly they were so much better than i was and um, one of my friends actually encouraged me to take it more seriously and start applying to um not applying um submitting writings to competitions and you know like magazines and stuff and so i started to and well uh, I got rejected everywhere, <laughs> but it was a start. And and then I actually stumbled upon um, this competition where it was like uh, the top 20 will get voted on and then the editors will decide out of the top 20, like which 10 stories will get published. And I I wrote this short story um basically like a psychological kind of story where uh you're not really sure what is real and what isn't and i sent it in i got into the top 20 and i bothered everyone i knew to vote for me because it was you know one of those competitions where people vote through likes and in comments and so I was like guys please can you vote for me and miraculously um I got into the top 10 and the editors really liked my story and that was my first ever published short story called I'm okay and uh, I did get paid for that, actually. I just got paid, like, um, a little. But it was my first big win, and it made me so happy. Um, and then, other than writing, because, you know, obviously that started with reading, as it usually does with most writers. But for music, for, like, the singing, songwriting side of my creating, I got into it because I just, I really, be like and again the arrogance with thinking I can do that as well and it looks easy um but I actually have to thank a friend for getting me started with songwriting seriously because she basically uh called me up one day and she was like hey I'm writing a song could you help me finish it and so I was like sure and I was like I was like 12 that time, okay, <laughs> this isn't anything serious, but um, I was like, sure, I wrote down the lyrics, I remembered, I memorized the melody, and I wrote like half of it, then I completely abandoned it for a year, <laughs> then a year later, I woke up one morning, randomly humming the tune, and I was like, what song was that again? oh yeah, it was that song that I promised to finish, but I never did. And so I dug up the notebook. I finished that in like a few days. And then when I was done, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I've created like a real song and I like it. I actually like it. I actually like that song to this day, actually. But um, it's one of the only songs that I still like from that era. And so after that, a few days later, like the second song came to my mind and I finished that. 
almost immediately and it just kept coming and that was like that was the first era of my songwriting because at the time I didn't know how to play guitar so I would just come up with the melodies and write the lyrics and I would do these little acapella recordings it was horrible but (laughs) but um my songs at that time were really long and really wordy and they were they were just they were bad they were really bad and then my second era of songwriting it actually started with a competition because um there was a do you know the site um write the world it's like a basically it holds competitions every month to encourage the youth to you know write different genres like flash fiction or whatever and they held this songwriting competition and was like oh my god that's so cool so I entered and it was a type where like you submit it on the website and then your peers can review your submission and so some people (laughs) reviewed my song and they weren't mean but the thing is I was at that stage with my songs where you're like letting it out into the world for the first time and you're really sensitive and if anyone dares speak up about like oh you could have done this better or you could have done that you're like how could you say that that hurts my feelings so much and so I was at that stage and I felt so attacked (laughs) and I felt so sad but then I was like, okay, fine. You want a bridge? I'll try to write a bridge and we'll see how it goes. And I wrote a bridge for the song. And I was like, oh, that's actually better. <laughs> so um, so I started taking criticism a, a bit better after the competition. And I started incorporating um, different styles in my songs. And that was like the second era of songwriting. It was... Uh, halfway decent for my third era of songwriting it was prompted by um actually okay this is gonna mm, this is gonna sound weird but uh it was actually prompted by um Robert Downey Jr. and uh a friend of mine (laughs) okay so um I'll explain right okay so at the time Oh Lord, when was this? Like 2016, 2017, right? Um, I was obsessed with Robert Downey Jr. And I had this mental fan fiction <laughs> that where like my character is his best friend and they date after like he becomes sober, but then their relationship like slowly becomes really toxic and sad. And so I basically started writing and two albums based on that story in my head. And so I wrote the first song, um, Charlie Chaplin, um, which is, I, I named it that because uh, Robert Downey Jr. played Chaplin in this film a few, in like the 90s. And then... Um, at the time I had just met my friend Weej and he was also a musician and an artist, but he also produced, like he liked to dabble in mixing and mastering tracks, right? And he listened to my songs and he was like, you are like, you have potential, but you gotta you got to have a wider view of things. Like, you got to have um, a better approach to things. Because the thing is, when I write songs, I typically, well, I used to think of the lyrics only and the melody. And that was it. Like, like just that. I didn't really give much thought to the guitar arrangement or how I wanted to produce it or the vision I had for any of the like cover art or 
the future music video who knows and him like being such a multifaceted and multi-talented person uh had had approached things with a, a more broader perspective and he really taught me how to think of the big picture when it comes to creating and after that i just started being more proactive i suppose in thinking my creations through and now like um you might remember i debuted this uh song at the festival called god of wishful thinking that's actually one of the most well thought out songs i've ever done like from the story and the lyrics to the cover art the cover art took me like two months to make on my own <laughs> so sad to the music video idea that i have i owe a lot to people in my life to my friends for really making me a better creator and better person in general thank you for going through all those stories with us and i can't even count the amount of parts that resonated with me um from you detailing your storytelling days on notebooks i used to do that too as a child i would just like scribble on notebooks my parents would ask me to tell stories and i would always tell it differently each time because i was like not coherent then but i knew that stories were amazing <laughs> and that i wanted to learn how to tell them um and then of course falling into fan fiction um and fandom in general and how it's an insanely like a lot of us just look back at stuff like that and cringe right but then without like fandoms we a lot of us would not have our start in creation essentially like this generation of designers and developers and musicians and writers and artists have been propelled by making things for anime or for harry potter and i think <laughs> it it should be oh my god harry potter yes reclaim and own up right it's very clear that you have like those influences right? from um the fan fiction sites to people in real life who help you stumble across things um seemingly by chance but really um it's by a matter of like how strong your relationships were with them and or how knowing like the right friends and them believing in you kind of tapped into like are there part um of you as a creator and that was like I mean to hear I think it's very important for people to have like a balance of both like influences um online and like around them in real life and definitely yeah the act of creation is definitely hard to do alone. Is there anything there that you want to delve into? Um, want to recount to us what fandoms were important to you, um, what websites and platforms or what spaces really helped you grow as a creator? How did Wattpad propel you? Um, what are the tools and platforms you find yourself in today? Where do you find other people who help make you the creator you are? I think these spaces evolve. Um, they definitely have over the past decade. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on what helped you then and what's helping you now. Wattpad was definitely the main website in my early teens, actually. Because that was a safe space back then, you know? Like, all the fandoms were there, all the fan fictions were there. Everyone, like, from age 13 to 18 was there. And you could just, like, you, you could find so many amazing gems. And although now most of the works that I used to love, uh, I look back at them now, I'm like, oh, God, so many grammatical mistakes. They were really influential because, like, these were either fan fiction or original works from teenagers like me, you know? And to see other people doing that was really inspiring because it was like, if they can do it, if they can make this book that gets like a million reads, I can do it, right? Like, I mean, it'll take work, but it's achievable. Um, other than Wattpad, I don't think I really 
went anywhere with、um, my creations online, other than maybe write the world, but that was only for competitions and not really for like、um, a community. And nowadays, actually, I guess nowadays I turn to Discord <laughs> for、um, create. Creator communities because I I've joined like several discords that aren't they're not centered around creation but you know they're full of interesting people and you're bound to find other creators who you can talk to and learn from but um I don't know I'm honestly I'm hoping for like a new wave of sites like Wattpad where everyone can just like. Flood that space with their creations and feel safe. Because even Wattpad nowadays it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel the same. It's like pretty dead, but also it can, it feels more、um, toxic, <laughs> especially with all of the fandom wars and stuff. But in where I put up my creations and where I view other creations,、um, and not necessarily like where I find community. I'd say that SoundCloud is probably my favorite platform today, because I can put up my songs there, and you know it's not like YouTube. Well, I'm sure they have like their own verified system on SoundCloud, but it's not、um, as hierarchical hierarchical as. YouTube, where like you've got the verified artists and you've got the unverified artists, and the the unverified artists aren't seen as like as legit. <laughs> But on SoundCloud, you can literally stumble upon this random indie musician's demo and be like, "Oh wow, this is a really cool song, and it sounds legit." And like even if it's not, even if it's not recorded in like a Professional sound booth, even if it's just a recording they took in their like little living room space, whatever. You listen to it with an open mind, and you like, and you get to appreciate it for the core of its being.、Um, and I don't know. I feel like there's a lot less judgment on SoundCloud because it's all kind of stripped down. And you just get to appreciate songs for what they are, rather than all the glitz and glam and like the super amazing music videos you see on YouTube or the、um, or the overproduced <laughs> tracks that you hear typically on Spotify. It definitely feels safer there, especially for me, especially for this. Indie, small time noob musician. It feels like a space where I can just put up my original songs and be like, "Oh, here, guys! Like, I hope you like it." <laughs> It's weird how I don't know, like platforms definitely change and don't feel the same as they were when, at one point in time, they were like everything and. I can't help but think that the way like young people are navigating the web now is so drastically different from how we did when we were growing up. We're all around the same age, I, I think. <laughs>、um, right. So yeah, it's it's weird to think about how much it has changed and how it is seemingly like becoming very capitalist and consumerist. And I I've never it's never been like so focused on numbers, right? And、yeah, it's so weird to me, and it's really disheartening,、um, especially for young creators. I know so many artists where when they would call like the girls back then, it's always around like people being big was not a thing.、Um, it was always about finding like small communities of friends,、um, even if you maintain things. But now, like the way people put themselves out in the web is like right, so centered on numbers. If you don't make numbers, like you will not have any friends, it, it almost feels like, and that's such a sad thing. Um, Bianca, I think, was thinking about this further too, and we were discussing about how, like, 
maybe a part of this is just like the depersonalization of the web um, and how when it caters to like everyone, um, it ends up really serving no one, not audiences, no creators. Um, True. Um, so I wanted to ask you since you're talking about, oh, I don't feel that safe, you don't judge you. I want to, I want to know your definition of what makes a safe space for you, especially as a creator. Hmm, well, I think, I, I guess it's just when we were growing up, like, obviously the internet had been around for ages, but when we were growing up, like, Facebook just started. YouTube just started, you know, all of these huge websites that we now use today were babies back then. And it felt like, even though like there were millions of users already, it just, it felt like a smaller world. And and like you guys said, like it, it doesn't feel as personal now. It feels like you're part of this huge community but also that you're kind of isolated and alone and you don't really get to connect with people as much and well for me like Wattpad growing up it felt safe because people were just I guess we were all just kind of <laughs> oblivious about the dangers of the internet and so you know we would just like read stories comment message each other just like hey what's up just like total strangers and starting conversations with everyone and anyone you could find and it all like for the most part it worked out but now I feel like now that we're more aware it's kind of like when you, it's kind of like the process of learning to write. Cause you know, when you're younger, you don't know as much about the, the typical way to write whatever genre you're writing. And so you just write however you want it and you have that freedom. Um, but then as you learn more and get older, you become more cautious and and then you kind of feel a bit more, how do I say this? You feel a bit more hopeless, I suppose. Because you're like, oh, can I ever write something good? Like with all of these standards in my head. And it's kind of the same thing with getting to create a community online. Because you're always like, oh God, like what if this person is... Um, a creep or you know just some sort of weirdo and you get scared you get scared to like reach out and connect with these people um and even with friends sometimes I think we can get a bit too in our heads about it like you know the whole culture of like you see the green icon but then they're not replying and you're like oh my god do they hate me <laughs> You know, you just get all of these ideas and you just overthink things and it feels more and more isolating. I just remembered while you were um, describing your background on the team that you're studying um, biology at UP Cebu, if I'm working to choose biology, um, and how you see that intersection of the STEM field of your art. Oh yeah, I, I know that when I said biology, it probably sounded a bit strange because I like write and basically all my hobbies are creative. Um, but actually, um, I, I chose biology because I'm really passionate about environmental science. I wanted to major in environmental science, but unfortunately they only offer that for masters. So um, basically, I'm, I, I'm not sure if it really intersects per se with my creative hobbies, but 
it's just that I've always been passionate about the environment and I've always loved nature. Like, uh, okay, a lot of my friends are <laughs> gonna interject because um, I, I'm not the type, I'm not the outdoorsy type, I'm not the type who wants to go camping or <laughs> anything like that. But I, I enjoy looking at nature and like taking walks in, in parks and stuff like that. I just don't want to lie down on the ground or anything dirty like that. <laughs> but um, it's just I'm very passionate about wanting to make a difference, especially when it comes to climate change and climate justice. And I actually want to um, start my own business someday. I know that's like years from now, but I'm hoping to start my own business and like um, basically make products that make it easier for everyday people to live sustainably. Because I think the, the huge problem right now is that stuff like, um, say, solar panels or uh, a full water filtration system that you can install in your own home or you know other things like that they're very expensive and they're not very they can't really be afforded by or accessed by regular people especially people who are living on a budget and they can't really afford to set aside money for stuff like that and so i I just want to basically make just easier for regular people even on a budget to live sustainably and I figured even though I want to go into more of the like management business side I want to learn the science behind it you know I want to be able to explain (laughs) why climate change is happening and um, the biology behind the science behind um, ecosystems and how they work I've been meaning to kind of intersect my love for nature with my creating. Like for years, I've been like, maybe I should get into like environmental writing, like, you know, um, writing essays and, and articles about climate change. But for some reason, I, I never really started. I suppose it's because I'm kind of scared because uh, the thing is, I don't want to get anything wrong. And I figured I should learn more about all the details before posting anything that might misinform people and just, you know, make me sound like a fucking idiot. Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> and... I have written poems about nature in general, though, not necessarily um, and like climate change, but just like appreciating nature. Um, I actually got involved with this blog called Haikulan, because like haiku, ulan, like rain haiku. And um, that was run by a friend of mine. And I just, I loved writing haiku about nature and appreciating nature, I, especially in lizards. I know that sounds random, but I think lizards are super cute. <laughs> like, they're so small. And then, you know, like, sometimes their tongues start out. Okay, <laughs> that sounds weird, but um, I've always had a fascination with them, like, especially when I was a kid and I loved to observe things around me and I loved lizards because I noticed that they had both claws and like little sticky paws I mean not little sticky paws like little sticky pads bottoms of their paws and you know what's crazy like I, I literally told adults like when I first observed it I was like oh my god, dad, they have both claws and sticky pads. And he was like, 
oh, don't be silly. I'm like, no one believed me. But guess what I learned this year in biology? Lizards really do have both claws and sticky pads, and I think that's amazing. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, well, you were too advanced for them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just, I, I just love nature and I mean, I, I don't think anyone can deny that we need nature to survive. Like we cannot live without it and we need all of these ecosystems to get the resources that we need to survive. And I think it's really, it's just, it's so ridiculous that some people still debate the existence of climate change or like, you know, they still debate the fact that we are in a climate crisis right now. And I think, especially for our generation, we have to really start pushing for change, especially from big companies, especially from government. Um, Cause even the fact is, even if everyone does their part individually, if there's still gonna be these huge corporations that create all this waste and government that doesn't support sustainable living, then we're not really going to see that much of a difference. And it might get to a point where future generations are going to have to put up with a ton of natural disasters. I mean, just this year, there were so many typhoons and they were so destructive and it re like, I don't, how can you deny the impact that it has on people's lives? I mean, uh, you guys have done an amazing job by fundraising for the survivors and the victims. But, you know, not everyone is making that much of an effort. And I'm just scared for our future and the future for you know, the children that I might someday have. And I think, I, I just feel that it's part of my duty to do as much as I can for the earth and, and to save the resources and the planet for future generations because that that's their legacy. That's what they're going to get, whether they like it or not. Thank you, obviously, meeting us through festival and for sharing your work with us in just like working to try and do what we can as students and young people in general, trying to save a world that the previous generations have kind of messed up. <laughs> All we can do is um, make life easier for the next. And it's so sad, like you say, that this is like an impossible goal at times, but I, at develop, that's basically what we do, right? We exist in hoping that making creation more accessible to people will unlock more opportunities for all of us to take part in shaping a better world for those who will come next um, and to ease the pain that we ourselves went through. I'm curious to know, because like you also mentioned that your academic interests right now um, don't necessarily like 100% overlap with your personal like passions and interests as a creator. and we are all definitely not in spaces also where um, our academic studies um, also line up with what we do in our free time. That's why we have distinctions between them anyway. Um, and that's totally fine. But um, maybe as one of our last questions, I'm curious to know, um, what do you think people should do then, um, especially young people, um, other students in the developed community and around? What should role should we play and what action should we take to shape a better world for the next generation? I feel like the one of the biggest things is um, building a community or like um, joining an organization like DEVELOP. Because the thing is, we just have more power that way. We did a festival. Like, all of us could have done our own little fundraisers, right, separately, all of the different creators. But when we came together into one event, we raised so much money, and that was wild. Like, I did not, I honestly 
did not expect we would raise that much money. And I can't imagine how much of a difference that will make. So I think a, a huge part is creating and, and encouraging community and really banding together to um, to make a difference and to launch events and causes that can really help a lot of different people with a lot of different issues. And I think... I think a big part is actually imbuing your creations with some overall meaning, like a, a deeper meaning um, that relates to the real world. Um, well, sometimes, I, I mean, I'm not saying like all of your creations have to have that deeper meaning because sometimes we just want to create like silly little stuff, right? But I do feel it's important to do a few works that kind of reflect the causes that are dear to your heart and issues that you think are very important and should be talked about more. Um, for example, the this song "Anomaly." Um, it's from it's from one of the albums I wrote for the RDJ Mental Fan Fiction. <laughs> But the, the, the story of the character I had in my mind is really tragic because um, when their relationship became toxic, it became like very emotionally abusive. And the songs in the first album talk about like how she had to deal with like um, feelings of confusion, just like about, is this my fault or is it their fault? Like, is it my fault that he's treating me so badly? And all of these emotions that people who suffer from emotional abuse typically go through. And in the end, she finally realizes that it's it's not her fault. I mean, it's it's never the fault of the victim. And she finally runs away and gets herself out of that situation. And the next album is about how she recovers from that and she learns to love herself again and accept that it really wasn't her fault and that she should stop blaming herself. I know that's not like a it's not like the first time someone's put that message out there but I feel like it's still important because especially now with these really toxic cultures online um, of victim blaming and gaslighting and all of this shaming going around it's hard to realize your self-worth and uh, and for me like it's it's really close to my heart because um I know a lot of people who have had to go through that kind of stuff and have had to fight through their issues just to finally come to the conclusion that they didn't deserve to be treated that way. And it's heartbreaking to see that. Um, and so it was really important for me to underline the fact in my songs that it was not her fault and that she deserves a life where she's happy and that she deserves to not be stuck in a situation where she's abused. And so, Getting back to the question, um, I think for artists nowadays, like especially those who are our age and don't really have that many resources as of yet, I think the main way we can help is by creating stuff that is that sends out a message that you approve of and that can help other people um, who are dealing with whatever issues and also by joining with other artists and creatives and really pushing society to change whether it be through fundraisers or informational campaigns just trying to get the majority to realize what is happening and how they can help and that they need to act now rather than later sharing that with us thank you also for 
putting importance and weight to those kinds of narratives um, that definitely need um, to be elevated, especially in these times. Um, it's disheartening how after years and actually just like after centuries, um, lots of people still harbor these kinds of beliefs. Um, but I definitely have faith in the fact that media and creation, especially imbued with like personal experiences and meaning, um, can definitely change people's minds and also be of ease to others affected. So thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for having me. Is there, oh, how do I wear this? <laughs> well, to end off, um, what can we expect from you this year? Um, and where can we find you and follow your work? Um, well, you can find me on like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, basically everywhere as Kate Livewire, Livewire is one word um and then for what you can expect from me this year uh i'm actually planning a valentine's text-based game that i'm gonna work on with some friends uh and it's gonna be like um ghost related just like the first one i came up with um and it's gonna be like kind of ghost game show thing very dangerous very scary <laughs> Um, and other than that, uh, I'm also working on a novel with a friend of mine that we post on Archive of Our Own, and it's called Between Pages. It's a, a mystery book, basically, with a touch of fantasy in there. 